Ilmari is there from Finland. Sahara Sahib, nickname. Eh vastu tajai, nah jai, nit nit rakh udharo. If Pranam Acharyaji, I find that sometimes there is a peaceful quality at play in life and the desire for truth is naturally present. However, at some point the changing states of mind start affecting me very strongly. The desire to go with them overpowers the desire to see clearly every time. In Nitnam it has been advised to always keep the name of God in mind. How will the petty mind learn to respect God as something more than just a temporary relief among all the worldly temptations? Thank you for the clarity. The verse he has quoted says, God is not to be renounced. Keep him again and again in your life for liberation. It is interesting. Keep him again, again in your life. Nit nit rakh udharo. Here is the answer to you, Ilmari. You are not the first one who slips. The Gurus knew very well that the tendency is of the mind is to fall back. Doesn't matter how many times you pick it up. It is designed to slip again. Therefore, Spiritual practice lies not in regretting the various falls, but in ensuring that no fall is permanent, that no fall is final. Fall you will and there should be no surprise in that. You are designed, constituted to fall and you don't need to go into the details for that. Just look at your body. You remember the mirror I sent you, Ilmari? Look into that mirror and look at your nose, your eyes, your hair, your skin. Does your skin ever experience anything from the inside and your entire body is skin, is it not? When you say my body, what you really mean is the skin. Is there any part of your body not covered by skin? Look at the eyes. Look at the ears. Look at these fingers. Are they manufactured to hold the truth? Are they? You see these four digits and then this thumb. You know what it's for? To hold like this. Four on one side, one on the other side. 
your body is designed to hold a teacup, not the truth. Too bad. If stuff were to be designed, it could have been designed otherwise as well, right? But look at the damn design. The design itself is incapable of performing beyond itself. Hmm? These eyes cannot even look at the physical heart. Unless you get into an operation theatre or something. How will they look at the spiritual heart? Or would they? You know how difficult it is for the mind to look at itself? Start from realizing that the eyes cannot even look at the brain. How will then they look at the mind? Your eyes cannot even look at the brain. How will then they look at the mind? Brain is at least physical. The mind is abstract. You cannot look at even all the parts of your external body, can you? Forget about looking at your liver and kidney. Can you even look using your eyes at all the external parts of your body? You can't. How will you then ever know where Lust arises from. Or the various physical excitements arise from. So we are designed to be flawed. Too bad. It does not come easily to the mind to be self-reflective. Therefore, the mind has to be trained and taught. But it comes very easily even to the uneducated mind. To gape and grope. Look at things outside and then go for them. But does it come equally easily to the mind to turn inwards and be self-reflective? That does not come. We are designed that way. Neither can the fingers hold the truth nor is the mind designed to seek the truth. Our physical structure is designed to just eat, breathe, climb up a tree or climb up a skyscraper. I mean, not much difference. Or is there? An ape is climbing up a tree. And a civilized man, a PhD in management, is climbing up a skyscraper using the most advanced elevator. Is there really a difference? What is the ape going up for? Some food? Some success? What is our doctorate going up for? Some success. That's what we are designed for. 
And is the success defined in terms of spiritual attainment when you are going up a skyscraper? It's the same. So will Marie now see something. Just as Prakriti has designed you to remain in its clutches, similarly Prakriti has designed you for one more thing. Listen carefully. It has designed you to operate on probabilities. It has designed you to not to try in a failing cause for too long. First of all, Prakriti has designed you to fail in the spiritual cause. Secondly, it has also designed you to not to persist for too long in a difficult cause. Man, animals, organisms, all are designed to quit after a certain number of attempts. That is a prerequisite for physical survival. Try for a while and if you don't succeed then quit. Otherwise you will just die trying. So Prakriti has not only designed you to not to be spiritual, it has also designed you to quit your spiritual attempts. Because you will fail. You will fail because Prakriti has designed you to fail. And Prakriti has also designed you to quit when you fail. So try for 10 times. That much allowance is there. But 11th time you are designed to quit and try somewhere else. The ape tries for food in a particular area. In the forest. And if he doesn't get food in that particular area, what does he do? He doesn't insist for too long. He's practical. He moves on. The tiger chases the prey. Tries once, twice, thrice. And if the prey is too fast or too smart for it, oh, it gives up. It says, I'll try somewhere else. Can't waste all my time stalking someone. Some morality, you know. <laughs> So you are also designed to quit your attempts in the spiritual domain. That would be a bigger defeat. The first defeat is that we all are designed to be defeated. And the bigger defeat is that we go by our design and quit our attempts towards victory. Now do you want the small defeat or the bigger defeat? The small defeat is inevitable. The bigger defeat is a choice. I tell of both things. I tell everybody that small defeats are inevitable. You will have them. Let them not mean too much. If you are too disturbed by small defeats, you have had it. You won't stay put for long. You would be so embarrassed. And so ashamed of yourself that you will quit. So take the small defeats in your stride. Let them not matter much. Brush them aside. Brush them aside so that the bigger defeat remains at bay. What is the bigger defeat? To stop trying altogether. And remember that Prakriti has planned out even your bigger defeat. She has not merely planned out the small ones, she has planned out the bigger one as well. Small ones, you cannot avoid them. The big one, you can avoid it. Stay put. Take the blows right on the chin. Hmm? It's alright to have a bleeding nose. Then a bleeding heart.
it's a good thing you know prakriti is all matter so even if she hits and hurts you all the hits and hurts can only be material because the prakriti knows nothing beyond matter so even if she hurts you the hurt would be just material so you can take it here one more come on you anyway cannot hurt the real thing because you do not know the real thing you are just material so all you know is just material come on hit the material that's all that can be hit by you the world the prakritik world can at worst give you just material hits at best it can endow you with material gifts at worst it can take away material stuff you can take those hits can't you after all you claim you are a spiritual seeker so the material does not mean much to you let prakriti disturb you materially it's okay and what does material mean material does not merely mean money material also means hormones passions emotions thoughts prakriti will disturb your hormones prakriti will disturb your emotions all that is material you will feel this way or that way strong emotions will arise you know this is that all that is just material all that is just like being robbed of your money it's a material loss material disturbance don't take that seriously the real thing is not being touched if she disturbs your emotions keep standing who is disturbed just the emotions are disturbed i am not i'll do what is right i'll stay on the dharma course i have to follow what is right emotions they can do whatever they want to do it doesn't matter how i'm feeling what matters is what i must do ask yourself had you not been feeling this way or that way what you you have done and you will get a very good answer when you are faced with a dicey situation ask yourself had you not had any emotions this way or that way what would you have done and you will know what is the right thing to do hmm this is a good way to come out of uncertainty just ask this question had there been no preoccupations or prejudices or emotions or fears what would have i done and then go ahead and do that nothing else hmm?